Hello and thanks for watching this Acumatica video on sales prices, creating them, maintaining them, and configuring them. So let's get started. If we go into receivables, under sales prices, we can see a number of different price records here in our sales demo database. So Acumatica, if we open up a inventory item or a non-stock item for that matter, I'll take a look at this computer. So Acumatica has a default price. So the logic is the default price is used first. However, if there's a base price, then that price is used, which in this case, it seems to be the same. However, we can change it by typing in there. And notice the effective date and the expiration date. So in this case, Acumatica is using this price until December 31st, 2011. However, this price currently for the laptop is active as of January 2012, right? So we can make this price 475. So if we were to create an order, we'll choose a, a, a random customer here, one that's not in our sales prices, which I'll talk about in a minute. And we'll add an item. You can see that Acumatic is using the 475 price that we just configured. Okay, so this price is historic because of Acumatica's ability to have effective and expiration dates. So rolling back, we talked about it. It starts at default price, then it works to base price. The next specific price that can override is the customer price. So you can see customer and then a bartending has this price, but let's change it. It's effective on May 2015. Let's save it. And we'll create a brand new order. We'll add the same item. And notice the price is still 475. Acumatica is ignoring that price change because if we go back, you can see there's a break quantity of three. So in other words, this customer has to buy three before they get this price. So let's go back. We'll change our quantity to three. And now you can see the 467 has populated. So we'll save that. And now let's look at customer price class. So customer specific price overrules customer price class. Customer price class, however, if a customer belongs to that price class, then they get that price as well. So let's change this to 455, another unique number. And let's find a customer that's part of the wholesale price code. So we'll go into our list of customers. We'll open up ABC Holdings. We'll go to our delivery settings. Our price class is different than our customer class. It's designed to give you specific categories for pricing for your customers. So let's mark this customer in the wholesale pricing class. Save it. We'll go back to sales orders, create a new one. We'll select our customer. choose the same item and you can see that we're getting 455 as a price so if we go back you can see 455 across here and notice there's another rule right below it that if they buy three they'll get it at 450 so this screen is nice you can go through and you can make edit changes to every column you can go right down the list and you can add additional items as much as you want. So if we were to add an item, the first column is our ability to select base customer or customer price class. Based on this selection, meaning 
if it's not base, but it's customer or customer price class, this provides a lookup with customers or customer price classes. And then you would select your inventory ID, your break quantity, your price, and if necessary, your effective dates. So we also have some filters across the top. So for example, price type. Right now I'm showing all prices, but if I just want to see base pricing, I can do that here. I can show just my customer or my price class. You can indicate price classes, meaning customer price classes. You can filter by effective date, item category, item class that is, inventory IDs, warehouses, if it's specific to a warehouse, again, notice we allow you to define a specific warehouse. One warehouse versus another may not have the same promotions running. Acumatica supports pricing managers. So items that are configured to a specific pricing manager, which is defined here, or pricing work group can also be filtered here. Certain people in the company could be responsible for the pricing for certain items. So an Acumatica also lets us create price worksheets. So if we choose a price type, we pick a date, the date allows us to bring over items that have an effective date that's current. This will get our price worksheet started. So we'll click create. And now we have a worksheet that we could do a number of things with. And the worksheet has a status. We can keep it on hold. When we're ready, we can release it. And look at the top of the screen. We have an effective date that we can change. And if we check promotional, it allows us to define an expiration date. So maybe this worksheet is only effective throughout the month of April. We can give it a description. Maybe it's Acer's pricing. And the reason you might use this is, let's say your vendor gave you a price sheet of a promotion that's going on next month. What you can do is you can click on the import button, select an Excel file with the inventory ID and your sales price, and then you could release it and now it's in the system for that time period. So this is very convenient. You can bring in all the files. But notice this particular price worksheet has a number of items in it. And we could do a few things here. So one thing is we can click Add Item and select off the ones that we want to add using the filters up above, adding them with price codes and warehouses. We can copy prices. So Acumatica allows us to copy prices from a certain price type. So maybe we want to copy our base prices with an effective date of 331. And then we want to convert them over to customer price classes, for example. We'll select base. But we can do that and move prices from different types of pricing over. The other thing we can do is we can calculate pending prices. So you can see here with all these items in here, we have source pricing. So these are the prices that are in Acumatica currently. But if we click calculate pending prices, we scroll over to the left, you can see that we have a starting price basis. So currently source price is our source price column right here. And what we can do is we can say, all right, we want to make our prices 10% less, for example. So we'll say 90% and click update. And Acumatica will go through and give us pricing without the need to use an Excel spreadsheet to calculate something like this. So that's one thing we can do. But if you see, there's other options here. So we can take our MSRP field. So if we go to stock items, you remember we talked about the default price, but here's the MSRP field. So people often ask, what is this MSRP field? Because it really doesn't do too much. 
Well, it's used in our price worksheet to calculate from. So maybe you want to make your source pricing just below MSRP to be competitive. So we'll click update and now we'll get new pricing. Last cost plus markup percentage. What that does is it uses the markup percentage in the system. So if we go back to stock items, you can see there's a markup percentage. So when you're importing your items or updating your items, you can say, okay, well, we want to make sure this is 10% for this particular item. And based on the fact that this item has this value here, when we go back to sales price worksheets, we can say last cost, which is right here, and add 10% on it. Now it's 260. So there's tremendous power in Acumatica to do this. Of course, again, I can type in the values. I want to do spot checks. There's the ability to do break quantities in warehouse. You could define a price based on an alternate ID. In Acumatica, you can have different SKUs to pull up items. So if you use the specific item code, then this price goes into effect. So this currently is AA compute 01, but maybe I put in a different code indicating that there's a special. And now in order to get this price, you have to use this code. So we can hit save on this. We can take it off hold and we can release it. And now we've defined the pricing that will go into effect based on the state range and out to our customers. So that's sales prices. If you have any questions, at the end of our video is our contact information. Please reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you.